Hey everyone, this is Gabrielle Dixon from TeachingSpecialThinkers.com and this is a tutorial on how to use Google Drive to create forms um, for data collection. For this video, I'm going to create an ABC charting data collection form um, and you could create simpler forms. I just figured I'd go ahead and give a tutorial on this one um, since it's a form I use often in my classroom. So the ABC charting form, um, you know, you have your date, your time. I like to chart the duration of the behavior that's occurring, um, whatever the activity is, what and where, um, so circle time, gym, recess, speech room, etc. Um, the antecedent, behavior, consequence, and maybe any additional notes, and then you can have um, a drop down for the person filling out the form. So I'm going to show you how to create this form in Google. Um, so make sure you're signed in to your drive, to your Google account. Um, and then you're going to go to these squares and go to Drive. I'm going to click New and then go to More and then click Google Forms. Okay, so now you're in Google Forms. So you're going to title this form. So let's say you're making this for a student, uh, Joe, Timmy. so JT. Um, I always like to use initials because it um, keeps a little bit more confidential. A lot of counties do um, have Google accounts now, so it's even more secure. Um, but just in case, you can use initials. So, I'll call it that. You can do a description if you need to. And then we're just going to go right into making the question. So the first one is usually the date. So, I'm going to put date and then go over here to the drop down. And then you can click date. Um, so that's the first question. We're going to add another one. Time. And go down at the drop down. And there's actually an option for a time right here. So you'll click that. And then I like to put the duration in. So you're going to go to the drop down. And select time again. And then go down to these three dots on the right. Click that and then check on duration and it'll come up on your chart when you do duration. How long did the behavior last? You're going to say one hour, three minutes and you can do seconds if you want um, if you're using a nice uh, digital timer. Okay, and then we'll add the first question I like to do is um, the setting or activity. And if you want to, we'll go back to duration, if you want to um, add a description, just for people who might not be used to filling these kinds of forms out, who might not be used to um, the, the kind of terminology you're using, you, might, you can leave little notes so they all know. So the setting activity, um, you can do multiple choice. We'll do multiple choice for this one. So it's totally up to you. So we'll say classroom, um, art room, lunch room, and you can make as many as you want. Um, on this one that I've already made, I have tons and tons and tons, and I actually did a check off, but just because there were so many, so a drop down might be a little bit confusing. It might take more time. I figured this would be easier um, because usually we are pressed for time and it's just quick, so you can just select the classroom and whatnot. So the next one, the antecedent, so what happened right before the behavior occurred. So we're just going to go to next. Um, and you can say um, teacher request um, done with preferred activity, transition, whatever you want. So over here I have lots. Transitioning, given a warning, ask them preferred activity, ask to begin a work task. And then um, we'll put a note in. Just for some people who might not be used to these types of forms. Okay, the next one, the actual behavior. We'll go to check boxes again. Uh, so, just 
lots and fidget lots. So it's going to be specific for each student, and that's why this is great. So you can just make a bunch of checkoffs for this one. Now we have lots screaming, yelling, throwing, crying, hitting, punching, destroy property. Um, just depends on what student you're dealing with. And then the consequence. So what happened after? All right, so maybe in your classroom you do timeout. Um, maybe you verbally reminded the student. Maybe you show the student a visual. Anything that um, you do specifically in your classroom. And then I like to add in um, additional comments section and we're going to make that paragraph so just in case you kind of if whoever's filling out the form wants to give a nice narrative of what occurred as well and then let's say staff this form that's always good maybe just do drop down Dixon, Miss Smith, Carter, and whoever else um, do speech, OT, etc. Okay, and then when you're all finished, you can view the live form. So if you want to send this form to several different people, you're going to click send, and then you can just type in their email. Okay, subject, JT form, ABC form, and then you can see. Okay, and include form in this email. So um, they can save the form on their desktop or however they want to access the form quickly, and then um, you'll collect lots and lots of data on that. You can also send a link. So if they have the link, it'll take them right to the form. So let's, if you want to have like a little trial, see what it looks like. So time, 3, 20, ooh, that's not a good time. 25, duration, say it lasted an hour. Setting was the classroom because of teacher request. The student talked back. He was given a verbal reminder lots and lots of good stuff Dixon submit okay if it's been submitted submit another response if you you know took too long to um, do the first one and maybe you just jotted down notes and you need to go back and take the data you could input several results um, several responses in one setting okay once again, this is Gabrielle Dixon from teachingspecialthinkers.com, and this is a little tutorial on how to use Google Drive to create ABC um, data collection forms. Thank you.